seriously popular. Jewelry isn't a gift you give just once. It's a way to remind your loved one of a beautiful moment every time they see it. Blue Nile can help you find the gift that says how you feel and says it beautifully with expert guidance and a wide assortment of jewelry of the highest quality at the best price. Go to BlueNile.com and experience the convenience of shopping Blue Nile, the original online jeweler since 1999. That's BlueNile.com to find the perfect jewelry gift for any occasion. BlueNile.com Now we all know they're flesh and bone, the same blood, sweat and tears. So why do famous people seem to really grind some gears? Idiot! Waste of space. What the hell are they wearing that? Who even are they? Stupid hair. They look a right off. So whenever you feel lost and need a common sense, there's one place we all know to go straight to the comments. Welcome to Straight to the Comments. I'm Josh Peters. And I'm Archie Manners. Straight to the Comments is a podcast built around the hilarious, bizarre, and sometimes incomprehensible comments left under Mail Online stories. You know the kind of thing unfettered fury at poor parking, veganism, and social media influencers, a desperate pleading for the return of common sense whilst worshipping at the Church of Clarkson. Mail Online articles receive an astonishing 4 million comments a month. And these comments are viewed over 16 million times in all their misspelt glory. We use the comments left about a celebrity guest to form the basis of an interview and see if they can recognise the stories about them. I, however, have no prior knowledge of these stories or even who today's celebrity guest is, which puts me at a slight disadvantage. But I'm a plucky little soldier. I resolve to help out as best I can. You really are so selfless. A modern-day Mother Teresa in chinos. Well, I was wondering, as I often do, Joshua, would you have anything that might help me guess who today's guest is? (laughs) Your voice is so posh. I love it. (laughs) I do. I do, I do. The script is written to make you sound like a wanker. (laughs) I do. Yes, I have one of my uh, patented word clouds here. These are the most popular words found in the comment section under stories featuring today's guest. The bigger the word, the more often it's featured. Uh, See if you can guess who today's guest is, Archie. Great, thank you. So, on this word cloud, in the largest is Atomic Kitten. Mm-hmm. That places me at a huge disadvantage. I have absolutely no idea. It's a band. I know, I'm, I'm aware of it's a band, but I couldn't right. name any one of the members of the songs. Or ah. I, I've, I have no idea about that. Okay. Uh, divorce, This Morning, Westlife, Spain, Bankruptcy, OnlyFans, Ryan, Katie Price. It's not Katie Price. Um, this is a really bad format point for me. My knowledge of popular culture is really rubbish. You've just given me something that says OnlyFans, Atomic Kitten and Westlife. It's Kerry Katona! <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Am I open this threesome or not? <laughs> Kerry first found fame in the 90s as a member of iconic girl band Atomic Kitten. Since then, she has forged a career in numerous reality shows, including Celebrity Big Brother, Dancing on Ice, SAS Who Dares Wins, and winning the third series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. A mother of five, she's had to overcome drink, drugs, ADHD, and bipolar disorder. Oh, the wow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you might want to Sorry. read that again. <laughs> That's not the, the joke. We might be here for a while. <laughs> 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 Crack on, go on. Sorry. Sorry. Go on. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Kerry looked the at me. Is Kerry. It's fine. Crack on, I'm just thinking. Kerry I'll, looked I'll at me. Are we going into my medical Ke- history? Because we'll be here for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do that again. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. A mother of five, she's had to overcome drink, drugs, ADHD, and bipolar disorder. The legend that is Kerry Katona. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Kerry. After that intro, I might end up back in rehab. <laughs> <laughs> Was it that bad, Kerry? No, no, I'm teasing. It's fine. So, I've, I've heard worse. <laughs> um, welcome to the show. How Thank are you? Thank you for having me. I'm really well. It's my daughter's birthday today. so um, Congratulations. Well, which, which number of daughters? I don't know. I, I have to Google it half the time. I've got that, <laughs> honest God, it's like an orphanage at my house. Are I've you, got that many kids. Can't remember the names. Are Different you done dads. Now? Are there any, any chance of any more? Well, I'm 44. <laughs> this year you're not I am my other half's eight years younger than me so I can still pull them but I think I'm done you, you think look, you're done I think I'm done yeah yeah you look great for 40 if I can look like you at 44 I'll be very pleased well I just had an eye lift so that's probably helped <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's like it an looks... extra sketch under it. The amount of shit I've had done. Honestly, I'm like a flat pack from IKEA. Yeah. Honestly, I come with instructions how to put me together. In the 
<laughs> so, Kerry, you were saying that you've made a whole day out of coming to London today, including recording our podcast, going to the theatre. Take us through what's happening today in the life of Kerry Katona. Uh, well, yesterday we got here, we got ready, we went to watch Phantom of the Opera, which was phenomenal. I got goose pimples on my eyelashes. It was that good. Uh, we're here, then we're off to Tiffany's yeah. for some tea and sandwiches, and then we'll walk around Harrods, and then... God, it's a life being and Kerry then Katona, it, And then it? if my, my daughter is very, very, very well behaved, I might treat her to something. I usually just get a fake shit, but we're at Harrods, so I might as well get some real. <laughs> and then we're going to Benny Hanna's, which is our tradition, because we love Benny Hanna's, our favourite restaurant oh, in London. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. We're t- talking about fake shit. Two things that don't look fake is that, is that watch and, and ring that you've got. Fake. That does not look no, fake at all. That looks, looks that, like... That's a Rolex. That's far from fake. And this is not fake. And which of a ring we Are you engaged? That... I am engaged. Yeah, I've been was, engaged was... for four years, it's nearly. It's a beautiful... So, hey, when, when is the engagement going to turn into a wedding oh fuck knows i get scared is he what? here is he listening he to is. this one oh, minute i like him is he got headphones on? <laughs> one minute i like him next minute i don't no i'm joking i love him to bits but i think i've been married three times i've been divorced twice i'm now a widow and i do want to get married and then i, I believe everyone deserves a happy ever after it doesn't matter what you've been through we all deserve to be loved yeah and but also once you've got the engagement ring what's the benefit of getting married i mean you've got well, the there's rock lots now. of benefits you know there's tax taxes breaks. exactly oh, tax, <laughs> <laughs> tax breaks you know <laughs> uh, that tell me about that rolex because that's a beautiful watch okay. where did you get that i can no this is real it's very very I real i can see it's yeah. real can we not promote this i've already been held hostage once in my house okay oh i see yes no we'll move Moving on uh, swiftly. Uh, so, Kerry, the premise of the show. <laughs> Sorry, we can't just let that go. It's fine. No, I have been held. I live in Cheshire. So, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's the north. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah I, live, I live in the Golden Triangle. So, yeah, it's, it, it, you know, I've been held hostage by three masked men. You know, actually like, held hostage. Yeah. What did they know? No, I just thought I'd fucking make it up. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know whether when you, when you were so joking, you actually. Yeah, actually held hostage, yeah. What happened? Three masked men came in. One had a butcher saw, a sledgehammer, and a carving knife. Heidi, my daughter, who was with me, she was five weeks old. And then they marched. My husband, who I was married to at the time, I've got a Google app for these husbands because I can't remember their names either. I think it was the dodgy one, the drug dealer, tax driver, Mark Croft. Mm-hmm. He was a drug dealer. I thought I was going to get it for free. He was <laughs> actually my mum's drug dealer. That's right. how I met him. Right. right. Well, so when I spent with Brian, I moved back to England. Brian from Westlife. West Westlife. I've got God, that. yeah. So, no, let's just, just go, go right back to the beginning, because, just because yeah, I think it's going to be an important thing. Husband number one, Brian from Westlife. Yeah. Husband number two, your mother's drug dealer. Yeah. Husband number three, rugby player. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, for, uh, more like a wife beater, but go on. Fine, right. okay, yeah. great. So, like, took the rug, took the took it off the pitch, did he? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Scrummaged at home. Yeah. Potential husband number four sitting outside. Yes, yeah, so we've been together six years this year. Okay, so that, that's just so we're, just so we're all clear that's on. Fine. And, and yeah. I met the one who's sitting next door. He he seemed lovely, by the way. Complete so. opposite to me. I think Rude. if I'd have met Ryan twenty years ago, I'd have gone. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, because I was brought up in a world of foster. I had four sets of foster parents, three right. refugees. You know, my first memory is watching my mum slap wrist from the age of three. Sure. She gave me my Welcome first... to this new comedy podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I was just supposed to put it off. <laughs> <laughs> I was pissing myself. There was blood everywhere. Um, no, so I think I'm in a safe space now. I you think are. You have to go through these things, and you should be able to laugh at yourself. I yeah. take the piss out of myself all the time, but I'm even scared of taking the piss out of bipolar in case I get cancelled, oh, and I've you got fucking... Get we, we are the male and online. I, I, we, we choose who gets cancelled. Oh, we, right, you're okay. on the inside now. Oh, oh. Uh, I doubt you're immune. No. It's, it's a bit I'm, like, I'm it's really like, am on the dark side <laughs> now. It's like the traitors where you get given the shield. I you're now uncancellable. I love that show. Uncancellable. <laughs> um, should we crack on with the show? Yes. So, Kerry, the premise of the show is okay. that I read out some comments on okay. a Mail Online story about you, and you have to guess from those comments what the story is. Okay. Archie over here is going to help you. He's I have got a blank script is what I was trying to show you, so okay. I don't know what comments or articles yeah. Josh has chosen. So, should we get started? Yeah, crack on. Okay, Great. here we go. The first comment is from Jimmy the Hat. Uh, who's located? He at, actually might be my fifth husband. Actually, well, it, it might have been. He's currently located at HMP Pentonville. It says. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> um, so let's have go. that. Let's have that comment. She'd probably marry someone in space. So this is someone commenting that you'd probably marry someone in space. I think possibly because I've got engaged again. Maybe that's what the storyline is. How many husbands do you think you will end up having by the time you die? 
So we're, um, we're currently on three. No more than four. No yeah, more than four. If I marry Ryan, which I think we may, I think we may just go to Vegas. Well, generally, when you get engaged, that is the next step is to get well, married. Yeah. It is, but I, I, I think I just like wedding cake. <laughs> <laughs> let's okay, have that, comment. Well, let's have comment number two from Boredom Levels Nine Thousand, who's in the jungle in Uganda, refusing to give her nutrients back to the earth that fed her. Is she? Have you ever made an interview about? Like whether when you die, whether you want to be cremated or buried? Oh, actually, when I die, I yeah. actually want to be cremated. And because I've never settled down anywhere, I want to then be put in a rocket. And I want like a firework that yep. goes just a little bit out of the orbit. And then my ashes spread everywhere because I have five children and they'll probably all separate. But whenever so, they want to speak to their mom, they can just look up. So, Sky, so you'll just be everywhere. It'll be like you yeah. and Tim Peake. Yeah. In the, up there. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Kerry, you are quite correct. The story is Kerry Katona will send her ashes to space when she dies so her children won't have to pay her funeral fees. Um, I don't think that was the reason, but my kids have never paid for anything for themselves anyway. But there's actually a man uh, who also commented on the story called Gibbsy38 from Mano Beer, uh, who wasn't very happy with you. Oh, dear. Humans aren't satisfied with polluting our planet. We want to pollute space even more, too. Get a life. Oh, come on. That would be great for space. It might solve global warming. It could do. You we know what I mean? Know. I could become a saint. You could, you yes. Could. People could pray to saint me. Saint Kerry. Saint What would you Kerry. be the saint of? Uh, cocaine. Saint <laughs> Kerry <laughs> <laughs> of cocaine. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I've really turned my life around and I want to be an inspiration to others. But this wasn't for anybody else. This was no. just for my kids so that they... They, you know, I have a brood, I've got five children, they're going to go their own separate ways and I don't want them to feel like they've got to go to a certain place to come and visit me. They can just look up and go, I think it makes on. a lot of sense. I think it's brilliant. No, you, I mean, I've you, already organised it. Also, so look wonderful. What a fun way of ending a funeral. I know, fine Literally works. out with a bang. Like, yeah, great. literally, yeah. you know. I, I, I don't think it's really planet. nice. I don't think it would be polluting the planet or I anything. I don't think I'm that quite is. Healthy. It's quite literally getting your pollution off the planet. Yes, I'm fact. actually leaving you all. So exactly. Yeah, I'm not being buried in your ground, in your earth, in also, your soil. Did you know we are running out of burial space in this world? I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I Just thought about this up. the other day. What's I actually doing? thought about I think how many million years we've been here. Where do we all keep getting buried? No, they, they're now stacking them on top of the other. And then after COVID, it was complete chaos. You that sounded like, like my house last Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> So if you are going to be the patron saint of cocaine, mm -hmm. when was the last... Are you clean now? You've yeah. very well documented. I haven't touched cocaine since 2000... How old is my son? He's, I'm going to say 15 years. 15 years? Yeah, something like that. Completely no alcohol, no drugs, no nothing. No, I'll have a drink. Yeah. <laughs> Only on holiday. Coke was more my poison. Fine. It became it became a, a bit of a crotch for me. Yeah. And plus, I married my drug dealer because I thought I was going to well, get it for free. Uh, if anything, it's I think it's, it's tactical. Well, well, I thought I'd get it a bit cheaper. Yeah, was there no, well was there no friends and family discount? Well, that's what I thought. But no. But no. How, at the worst of your addiction, how much were you doing? For me, I wouldn't say it was addiction. It was more of a codependency. A bin I was a binger. Yeah. Say something was written about me. or there was, I mean, this was at a time when the news at world was huge and I used to have like 40 pups outside my house mm, every single fair. day. My mum was selling stories on me and sure. I was married to a drug dealer. Yeah. I, you know, I, I was being hounded and cocaine became my only friend, really. Yeah. It was all I had. And did you go to rehab to quit or did you just make no, that decision I went, no, yourself? No, rehab didn't help me get off coke at all. I mean, I got out of rehab six weeks later. I met and married my mum was a drug dealer. Right. You see, this is the, the thing with rehab and the stigma with it. People get it so confused. You know, it's about codependency, mental health. And mental health wasn't a big thing back then. No one knew what bipolar was. I didn't know what fucking bipolar was. Yeah. Everyone was I, suffering from it. But they just didn't I know thought it was a sport. I thought I was going to have to buy some shin pads and a gum shield. I thought, what the fuck is bipolar? You thought it was curling. Yeah, so when I got told I had bipolar, no one had ever heard of it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it became a thing. Yeah. But when I said on, like, this morning in an interview, I have bipolar. I mean, I talk fast anyway, so yeah. I, it's almost like Jonathan Ross has a, a lisp. So I, I roll over my words. I actually had speech therapy. She said I had a lazy tongue. I thought right. I'd be a shit lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> or would I? <laughs> Or is that how I got three men to marry me? Yes. <laughs> Everyone should try being a lesbian once. And yeah. was it tough going from this life of performing live on stage? You're in this massive band. At one point, I think you were the biggest sort of band in the UK or biggest girl mm -hmm. band in the UK. 
Did that have a factor in your dependence on cocaine? No, no, no. My drug career started well before I was famous. I really? was 14. My mom told me it was sherbet and it was speed. Seriously? Seriously, yeah. I was in Foss home. I, I thought that's what you did. I thought yeah. that's what you did with, with your mum. And then I'd say five pound up from my foster parents and I'd go buy a wrapper whiz with my mum. Wow. So when most of us were given money to go to a sweet shop, you were yeah. getting money to go to a And going on the rob shop. and all kinds of things. I, I didn't, I mean, my children are privately educated. They, yeah. they haven't got a fucking clue. You say you say. You think. know, so, I, you <laughs> know, I, that was normal for me. And I left Atomic Kitten because I didn't enjoy the fate. Fine. And just quickly, how did you go from... Being this this fourteen year old on speed to being a part of one of the biggest girl bands in the, in no. the UK. <laughs> I think I just had a great set of tits on me. I was good looking I at the time, and I was in the right place at the right time. I don't believe. I've heard you sing live before, and no, I definitely I am, don't I, believe no, that. I, for me, because my mum's an alcoholic, I was brought up in pubs, mm. so karaoke was my go. Yeah. Was always a thing. Do you still have a relationship with the girls from the band? But, oh no, they hate me. Ah. When, when, did you, when did you last speak to either of them? We were doing a gig at Butlins, and Tash said she didn't want to do it anymore more and so I said okay kill no worries and then I next thing I saw Tash and Liz were still carrying on without me oh my god I never I never liked Tash and Liz you were always my favorite was it because of the tits no it wasn't (laughs) (laughs) when was was that oh god uh how old's DJ I'm gonna say about eight years oh god long time so you haven't performed with them for no and do you still get royalties every time I play yeah so the the whole again that went to number one is my vocals yeah Obviously, they changed that the was, videos. That was during the, the Football World Cup, right? No, because, no, 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 no. That, the, oh, they, different they brought song. That, but, no, that is whole again. You're but right. they rebrought that out. South, get you the one. Yes. You oh, just oh, get me on. Like you can make me whole again. But surely that then drove up the original yeah, song. Yeah, but they brought Jenny Frost in instead oh. of me. And is, is it good, still good money? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Just for sitting there doing nothing. Though. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I sat my house doing nothing, just taking selfies with my tits and make shit loads of money, so. <laughs> just say that to my face, would you? The next story, uh, the first comment is from Dion in London. Kerry looks lovely. She should go back to singing and modelling. She was the best kitten. That's nice. So remember, we're that's trying a to... Ve- we're that's trying a very f- nice comment. That's a, uh, that's a first, aren't male. Mm. It's definitely I think I might, female or male. I think I might have wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Carrie looks lovely. It could be anything. Let's have a, a weight, second comment. Is it a weight loss? A weight loss, it's maybe? It's not a weight loss. Is it uh, surgery? No. But let's go to comment number two from Victim in Warrington. We ate in there some time ago. Waiting for a new windscreen to be fitted. Not bad grub. Okay, do you have a pub or a restaurant that you own? No. Okay, so you look. You must be photographed in a in a restaurant, a fancy restaurant. Is that am I getting close? I don't know. You look lovely. And you should go back to singing and you eat somewhere. Tell okay. you what, let's go to comment number three. This is hard. Uh, this is tall. From Scott in Hemel. Now what's wrong with the Toby? She's only human after all. So I must be at a Toby Carberry. This must be really old because I've not been to a Toby Carberry in years. I'll shock you. I've never been to a Toby Carberry. You're not missing much. This... What is it? It's like a self-service roast thing, isn't it? It's mm. like cheap. You know what? It's good, but I've not been to a Toby Carberry in years. So this must be an old she's story. She's had a glow, glow up. Look, she's wearing a Rolex. Kids Surely. are in private school. She's given up Toby Carberry. Hey, the... my standards <laughs> have changed. I'm not ashamed of that. The story <laughs> is Kerry Katona dresses up for lunch at her Toby Carberry local for a second time in three days. How old was that story? It's over 15 years old, the story. As was the meat that you ate at Toby Carberry, probably. <laughs> Where do you eat now? Where's your... Um, sweetheart! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a proper fooder. I never used to be, but like, you see, because I was dyslexic, right? So let me tell you, sorry. So when I first got into Atomic Kitten, I was dyslexic, uneducated, not academic at all, couldn't really read or write a spell. And we went to a Mexican restaurant Right, with a record company and the Atomic Kitten Girls, and I couldn't read the menu. So I got my manager to read it for me, and I just ordered like a burger and chips because that's all I really knew. And Liz ordered fajitas. And I sat there and I was like, oh my God, she's ordered a dead baby. Oh no, oh, fetus. Fetus, fetus <laughs> chicken, fe- because I'm, I, I was so uneducated that thanks to Atomic Kitten and travelling the world. <laughs> I love the fact that you thought in Mexico they might actually yeah, serve fetus. fetus. But I was just like, 
Because I, 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 I couldn't read the menu. I mean, I literally had to teach myself to yeah. properly read and write yeah, and spell yeah. properly. And I wrote six books. Like, I was so dyslexic. Like, right, even you... even now, like, I'll get my words back to front. Got and it. Like, it, is a, I didn't even is a read weird it. word to spell. Like, no, I... I didn't read it. I just heard, heard her it. say, oh. she went, I'll order chicken fajitas. <laughs> I was, thought, a chicken I, 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 I was like, I'm sure that's a baby in your belly. <laughs> I, I don't have a fucking clue. <laughs> so, h- how old were you when you got famous then with a, with Atomic Kitten? I was 17 when I got an Atomic Kitten. I think I was 19 when we got into the top 10. November 99, it and was. And how did your life change from going, from just it being... Was just, I literally went from foster home. Yeah. I was 16. I got put into a semi-independence home. Then I got my first council flat when I was 17. And then this guy called David T from the Pawn Kings. I was underage and Mr. Smith's dancing. Uh-huh. He approached me and said, look, I want you to be in this band. I'm in the Pawn Kings. Like, fucking pervert. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and he really was. Two weeks later, I'm in Germany pretending to play the keyboard on MTV in front of like tens of thousands of people like yeah and then I started dancing and then he introduced me to a guy called Andy McCluskey from our cash shop moves in the dark OMD I've never been for an audition or anything like that in my life. I took my portfolio with page three photographs. Cause I, honestly, because that was my get-out. I yeah. wasn't going to be a rocket scientist. I had a great set of tits on me. I thought, this is my get-out, honestly. And I sang them a few songs, and they based the band on my personality, and I was a founder member for, for two months. We held auditions, and I picked Heidi Range and Liz McLaren. Heidi slapped Liz, or Liz slapped to Heidi. Anyway, Heidi left to go solo, but ended up in the Sugar Babes. We got Natasha. I couldn't stand her. And then two weeks with her, I fell madly in love with her. And we was the best of friends. And four weeks later, we got a record deal. And it changed my life. And I I enjoyed the climb yeah. to fame. But it took me to the age of 36 to actually go, OK, I know how to deal with this now. And right. do you enjoy it now? Do you enjoy it when people come up to you in the street? Or... Oh, I, I love yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's always nice when people go, oh, you know, you've really inspired me. Obviously, I'm a hugger. I love what it took. Um, I think the press has changed as well. It's not like how it used to be. You're not as hound anymore. I mean, I'm the most honest person you meet in your life. If I go on holiday, I will take my own pap. Yeah. yeah. So, I, so, yeah I will do my own pap pictures. Talk us about that. Because you were kind of known for the difficult relationship with the press, where they hounded yeah. you. But did you ever court them? Did you ever tip off paparazzi? No, never, ever, ever, ever. Never? It took me a long, long time to get to that stage. And I was sad. This is when the news world was around and I was always getting asked to go do set up pat pics and I was like no thank you mm. and I, I think I was sat eating a burger and I had a pint and I was topless <laughs> on a beach bed and the picture went for £75,000 and I went hang on a fucking minute why am I not making any of this money and I've got a shitload of kids so yeah. from that moment on I would do my own set up pap pictures. So what would you do? You'd call the pap, from that moment on, you'd call the paps yourself and no, say... No, I, I have me and my friend, Steve, I've worked with him for years. I, I'm going away on holiday, let's bang so a load of pictures out. bring the pap with you, basically. Yeah, bring the, let's bang them all out, because otherwise, last time when I'm on holiday and I'm walking out the scenes, all these young lads are looking at me, I thought, yeah, I know my milk, but they're a bit younger, aren't they? are looking at me like that. And then I look, and there's a pap in the bush. Yeah, so you might as well do it yourself. So I'm like... I'm going to fucking minute. it. All. It I legs it inside. I went, Ryan, quick, take some pictures and put on Instagram and give it away for free. <laughs> What's the most you've ever sold a picture for? It's not like it used to be back in the day. Like, you used to get 100 grand for a photo shoot with OK Magazine. You're lucky you get three. Sure, really? Yeah. Because so you... the digital, because it's, it's all changed. Because we're all paps now, aren't we? Uh, we yeah, photos, yeah, yeah. It's a, I remember my first photo shoot I did with, I mean, it, back in the day, it was me, Pete and Kate. Yeah. That was just a face of OK magazine. Like I don't think I did it less for sixty grand. When you were making all that money, both from Atomic Kittens and from have, like OK magazine and all that. My kind of stuff. main money, like when I left Atomic Kitten, I had thirty five thousand pound in my bank. That it. Yeah, and I bought my house with it, and then I moved to Ireland with Brian McFadden. Sure. That, like when you're in Atomic Kitten, you live like um. Pediums, that, that's it. It's like literally you, daily fees. It's, it, it's like you, you not make it unless you get sponsored, like yeah. sponsored for this or you promoting this opera. I I literally had thirty five thousand pound in my bank and I bought my mum a terrace house with it mm. because I got pregnant with Molly, and I just thought I I, I didn't want to be rich and famous. I just wanted to be a mum and a wife. Aww. That was my dream, and yeah. I fell pregnant. Well, that's come true. And I fell pregnant. I thought, well, this this is it. I'm going to be a mum. Yeah. And so I, I I walked away from it all, but it didn't let me. <laughs> when when in your life did you first feel financially secure? Then coming from foster homes and everything, you know, everything being kind of up and down. I think um, I've been on every side of the coin you can think of. I mean, I've come from getting my clothes off a car boot sale to going on the rob. 
to having nothing to open on Christmas morning, mm. to becoming a millionaire, to becoming bankrupt, to getting a bit back, to becoming bankrupt, to becoming a millionaire again. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's done that. But um, money means fuck all. Does it make you happy? No, it just gives you options. For me, I can't take that with me. I can't take this with I can't. All I can take with me are the memories that I create with my children on my deathbed, like last night going to the Phantom of the Opera. That, that's all I can take with me. <laughs> Okay, let's go on to the next story. Uh, the first comment is from Dion in London. Right she is. She's absolutely stunning. As mad as a box of frogs, but she is gorgeous looking. I think that one's from me, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> is it a weight loss thing again? It's not. Let's give you some more to work with here. Comment two is from Loki. Uh, in... I mean, if I didn't lose weight and put it on, I probably wouldn't have a career. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't get married and get divorced, I wouldn't have a career. <laughs> Go on, uh, next comment. Comment number two is from Loki UK in Darwin. Those lads need a talking to. I know OnlyFans maybe. No, or it's not I'm... OnlyFans. It's nothing to do with OnlyFans. Is it? Is no. it no. be getting engaged again? No, 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 it's not. Let's give you the next comment Go from uh, Milikaz in Lancaster. Plus, her daughter's fourteen. As fourteen-year-olds wouldn't fancy a forty-one-year-old. Dream on, Keza. You know how you earlier in the podcast you said I'm a MILF? Have you said that? Oh, public? yeah, yeah, yeah. So my kids have got some shit because they've called me MILFs. So, <laughs> so, it says, kids, so like, what kid was it? We was at school and, uh, like, my children's friends, like, say, the boys, think, think I'm a, 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 MILF. a MILF, I guess. It says Kerry Katona admits her daughter Heidi, 14, yes. doesn't want her to do the school run because all the lads call her a MILF. Yeah. So, Kerry Katona, that. you are a bona fide MILF, according to 14-year-olds in yeah. the UK. That, that's my demographic. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. What is the biggest age gap you've ever had? I, Ryan, who I'm with, eight years. I've never dated anybody younger yeah, than, than me that. ever, ever. No, Ryan's living his absolute dream. Yeah, of course. You know, he's he's banging a, a fit older bird. How that did you two brilliant. meet online? Which app? Uh, Best uh, thing you ever got on the internet. Yeah, it's great. Which, which, <laughs> which website? Which well, app? Well, we actually have our own dating app called Marnie, oh. but we didn't meet on that one. Oh. We met on another one, but it doesn't matter which one it is. But he uh, can go meet somebody on Marnie. Oh, that's your. Marnie, no, so. she's, she's plugging that. I love. That. <laughs> very, very well is that, done. Does Marnie stand for MILF and something else? No, no Marnie. Marnie, uh, Ryan's last name's Mahoney, but it's Marnie in Irish. So it's M A R M with two eyes. Yeah. And they're the two love birds. Oh, cute. Yeah. So that's our dating app. For so, all your celebrity MILF needs. Very yes. good. Um, it's time now for a break. Why not pop out to a Toby Carver and get yourself an enormous Yorkshire pudding that you can nibble on during part two? Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. You know, it's hard to believe that inflation is still a thing, but boy, it sure is. And that's exactly why Mint Mobile still gives you premium wireless for just $15 a month. Well, it's also because we have that offer printed on, like, a million T-shirts, but it's mostly the inflation thing. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. Upfront payment of $45 for three months required. New subscribers only. Renew for 12 months to lock in savings. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com. When you're ready to pop the question, the last thing you want to do is second-guess the ring. At BlueNile.com, you can design a one-of-a-kind ring with the ease and convenience of shopping online. Choose your diamond and setting. When you find the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Go to BlueNile.com and use promo code WELCOME to get $50 off your purchase of $500 or more. That's code WELCOME at BlueNile.com for $50 off your purchase. BlueNile.com, code WELCOME. Welcome back to Straight to the Comets with me, Archie. And me, Josh. And me, Carrie Katona. There's been a little bit of a confusion in the Matrix there, but My yes. My balls have dropped. <laughs> Our guest today <laughs> is, of course, the fabulous, the iconic Carrie Katona. Uh, let's have a little chat about your about your career. You've, okay. you've had such a long and amazing career. You're known for so it's many different it. things. Yeah. It's quick, because you look about 20. Oh, I can see. I love you so much. And so we can see where the money from the Pat Pips has been spent. Yeah, oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> how much do you think you spent on the etch sketch as you describe yourself, Not yourself. Much. I'm very fortunate enough that I do a lot of collaborations so right. what would if you... I had to I probably wouldn't spend it so what, you can post and get like you know new forehead or yeah well, I, can you get a new forehead? Well, That's just you know, Botox, Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I've just had Botox I started Botox six months ago I, I love th- it I think the younger you are 
I think in your late twenties. It's a good time. When you okay, start. good because a lot of people think I started. To, I'm, I've just turned thirty. Yeah, no, so that's a good time. I absolutely love it. Go yeah. in there, it's like bang, 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 bang. Uh, Three that's days a good later, time. And, and the thing is, why not? Yeah. You know, if you've got like sticky out ears and you go and get them pinned back, no one says fuck off. Mm-hmm. No. If you've got a lump on your nose and you. No one says fuck no off. The Botox so, is somehow stigmatized. So if I you've agree. got like the map of fucking Britain on your forehead, yeah. sort it out. We can do things <laughs> about it. Nowadays. Yeah, we can do I things think, about it. Stop I upsetting think, everyone else. But I, I think it's a personal choice, and if yeah. that's what you want to, then that's completely up to exactly. you. But I do believe, hand on my heart, the industry completely fucked me up. Yeah. I mean, there used to be a time. Do you have like the circle of shame? And like they would zoom in like on your stretch marks and Ooh. you know like things yeah, so that, that you would feel so insecure and then they they put on a front cover of a magazine and, and you're like oh my god I need to look perfect yeah. and I think that has stuck with me massively. I'm sure. I mean these are my own. You're pointing out your your breasts. My breasts. Yeah, to, yeah. To I haven't got. Br- yeah, yeah. So I have had implants before, but I had them taken out. Um, oh really? Yeah, I've had two breast reductions because I just soap and water. They just keep fucking growing. Yeah. They're heavy, aren't they? My mother. Yeah, finds, I ha- finds, so She's not not for the same reasons, but, but yeah. But my she, back. Yeah. Back hurts, so yeah. yeah. So I've had she's two breast hate reductions. You that. Yeah, but no, but that, that that's true. a legitimate reason yeah. to have it done. Yeah. yeah, but I just had an eye lift because I started because pulling my eyes over and I thought oh so I literally about three weeks ago had an eye lift it looks great right. it looks good doesn't it I think it's fantastic yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now Kerry keeping relevant we, we must talk about OnlyFans okay take us through your journey on OnlyFans what what do you do on there how does it work we, we're yeah, very cost we have to make rates yeah. Uh, yes. You want to Is there a special yeah, code? I do, please. <laughs> I've never been on OnlyFans. No, I'm neither. We're ign- so take talk us through it. How does it work? How, what do you do well, on there? Well, let me start you off. I started off as a page three model. So right. back in the day, because I wasn't going to be a rocket scientist, I shit you not, I had the most phenomenal pair of tits you've ever seen in your life. I was a size six waist yeah. with a 34 double D chest. Okay. They looked fake. And then while I was doing Atomic Kitten... I actually started fully nude lap dancing to pay my rent. But ju- ne- just quickly before you, there's something that's not computing for me here. You were a part of this very successful girl band, yeah. but you say you were making no money. Yeah, so at the start of Atomic Kitten, yeah. I was just being asked to go in and record, but we wasn't being paid at this point because we wasn't any. Didn't have a record deal. We, we didn't have a record deal. So while we're doing that, I'm going, taking my clothes off and lap dancing because it was the easiest way to... Bear in mind, the other two girls were 14 and 16, so they still lived at home. I was 18. Yeah. I was living in a council flat. I had no guardians Got or anything. You. So, And I couldn't get a nine-to-five job because they wanted me in the studio as and when it suited them. So I started lap dancing. And I was so proud of my tits. I thought, a great set of tits. And next thing you know, I got in a girl band and then they're all, all these pictures come out. I've done all the, oh, it was a nightmare. And I go topless. I'll build sandcastles with my kids on the beach, topless so I don't get strap marks. And then the COVID hit. And, and so was that bad or good for the tip business? It was amazing for the tip business. But at the time, I was like, shit, how am I going to pay my rent? Yeah. I had all five kids at home at the time. So someone mentioned OnlyFans. And I thought... Well, my pictures are out there anyway. And wow. then I sat the children down. Yeah. I said, look, there's no work. I'm struggling. How would you feel if I started an OnlyFans? I said, obviously, it'll only be like topless. You know, it's a lot of it. It's smoke and mirrors. I'm not doing anything that you've not seen on the big screen when you go to the cinema, when you look at Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise dry riding or Natalie Portman finger blasting herself in Black Swan, getting awards, being paid millions. It was all. Darling, I'm well done, sweetheart. Character gets the nipples out. Get those kids in fossil. <laughs> those fucking kids. Get them off her. She, she deserves to be in fucking jail. It's true. And I mean, you're right. It's like, who puts us in these boxes? And they yeah. say, what, because I'm Russell Thespian, darling? Because I didn't go to the third skill? Or because I showed a bit of nipple? Yeah. And that yeah. turned your fortunes around, ultimately. Yeah. Only fans I, from... I think, from... I, I think I was literally... I, I, I wasn't far off going back into bankruptcy. How uh, many subscribers do you have on Only... Do you have subscribers on OnlyFans? Yeah. How, how many do you yeah. have? Loads. Like, how many, roughly? Loads. Like, give it, what Nearly 2,000. 2,000 people? Something like that. And they're all paying a monthly fee. To, and, uh, it what, goes up and down. It goes up and down. <laughs> hey! Uh, does, what do they get for that? Like, well, subscribe and you'll find out. <laughs> oh, she's giving nothing <laughs> yeah, away. Yeah, that's the point. That is... is it just just upper body? Yes, yeah, subscribe and you'll see. Oh, my God. Yeah, Teasing, even in the podcast. If Josh came to you now and said, look, I'm thinking of setting up an OnlyFans. Do what it. Would, I don't know why everyone hasn't done it. What would yeah. your top tip be? Do it. Just fucking do it. For me, it's ridiculous. I, I can take a picture of my foot and make a thousand pound. Yeah. <laughs> Why would the fuck? Why would I not? 
And then these people sat behind a desk, nine to five, working the fucking ass off. And yeah. it's like, who's one laughing? You can say all you want about me. Oh, those poor kids. I'll tell you what, like my poor kids crying their fucking Lamborghini <laughs> on the way to the private school, to the fucking mansion, why we go fucking on a wonderful holiday. So fuck you, who's having the last laugh? My kids are having a great laugh. That's all I care about. There we go. <laughs> Um, and so is the singing done, do you no, think? No, no, I still no. perform. I, still, do yeah, perform? I don't just do OnlyFans. You know, I've got my boutique, I've got Co's Boutique, I've yeah. got my fitness platform, MFit, I've got my dating app, Marnie, I do panto every year, I'm always acting, I, I do everything. Um, I'm, 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 I'm an all-rounder. Will you ever try to record again, <laughs> no, do you think? No, no, it does not interest me in this slide. Really? I like, being, I like being on the stage and performing. Okay. What if it was like a charity single? If we got like a whole load of OnlyFans stars together to do a charity single? That could be good. Uh, yeah, a bit weird. <coughs> well, yeah, I guess so. It would so. It'd be so, called it, Vibe Aid. It would, yeah. I love performing, but I'm not one of these. Is like, oh yeah, oh that. Oh yeah, I like entertaining, but I'm not. I'm not recording. What artist. I find mental about OnlyFans, or what I find completely mad about OnlyFans, is like I often try and look up my genealogy and see what my great great grandparents were up to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your great 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 grandchildren will be able to see photos of your tits. Well, they was already out there anyway, so yeah. I'm now I'm just making money off it. <laughs> My my tits was out there already, so also, it's what, just like, well, they're just fucking tits, you know yeah. what I mean? You guys suckle on them for fucking breast milk, exactly. get over it. You said that to my face, would you? Let's get back to the story, shall we? The first comment on the story is from Eccles Cakes Are Great, and they're located anywhere. It's called prioritising your spending. Looks like she's never been good at that. Catty. Okay, is it because I bought a Lamborghini? Did you buy a Lamborghini? Two. <laughs> I I think at one point, the first time I was a multimillionaire, mm-hmm. I think I bought a new car every week. What made you a multimillionaire that time? The, the um, band? No, no, oh God, no, no. again, I watched never, one of the No, 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 no. I think it was more reality TV shows. I was also the face of Iceland. That's good. Yeah, I had my reality show. And also, because mothers go to Iceland, if you've got five kids, you're going to Are we and I was talking about the country or the shop? The shop. Obviously, the shop. No, people oh, are just just yeah. in the country. Well, she didn't know. become president of Iceland, going to the G7 was, with a bomb and going, sorry about hey, the volcano. Chicken dinosaurs, I'm bound to love. So I was the face of Iceland for about five years. That was like 400 grand a year. That 400 was, grand a year? Something like that, yeah. Just to be the face of Iceland? No, I wasn't just the face. Like, we did 16 hour well, days you on the filming. Checkout, were you? I mean, well, like, no, but the filming you do for the advert. So the oh, TV show. Going to 400 grand, you poor thing. Did you get lots of free Iceland I got, food? Yeah, I got free Iceland Did food. you ever eat any of it? Yeah, it's lovely. Actually, I still love Iceland. I still order from Iceland. I bet you yeah, that's not true. I swear my kids' really? lives. Why would I not? Yeah. Because yeah, it's shit. No, it's it's cheap. Okay, it's cheap. It's cheap and it's good and it doesn't matter who you are. The comedy affects everyone and I've got a fucking orphanage to feed at home. <laughs> Okay, next comment is from Nelly6869 in Manchester. She did the right thing. Parrots are great, but they're not particularly absorbent. Oh, I know what that is. What is it? This is right. This is such a fucked up story, but it's so true. (laughs) I'm dreading this. So, uh, we, we were really, really poor. I was living in a semi independence house and my mum was in a council house and this is when I met David T and he used to pay me 50 quid to go on stage and sing him. Who's David T, the guy who... In the Palm Kings. Yeah. He used, he used, mm. I used to go on stage and sing, I will always need you, you mean the world to me, let's stay together, baby, together we'll be free. Did you know that song? Yes. Yeah, well, I used to go and mime it <laughs> and he paid me 50 quid pretending it was me. Just to mime it? Yeah, but I got my period. So I got my period... And I had no tampons or mm. sanitary towels. So I had a parrot, right? I mm-hmm. didn't use a parrot, don't worry. <laughs> but I sold the parrot. Oh, no. For £20. A live parrot? Yeah. A real parrot. What was his name? Was his Alfie. Name? Yeah, he was very African good. Gray. We loved him. And so I sold the parrot for £20 so I could make a £30 profit. So I could buy myself some tampons and sanitary towels to go on stage. To make another 50 quid? I only made 30 quid because I sold the parrot for 20 that's and then I went, well, you know, it's got me. <laughs> so that's like a GCSE Alfie. maths question. Yeah, that yeah. Is. Kerry's on stage having her period, and her parents yeah. worth 20. That's a true story. Yeah. We were, we, I was so <laughs> skinny, and there was, there was, I mean, I think at one point I was living on ketchup bodies when I was a little kid. So, yeah, the story is I sold Elfie for 20 quid. Kerry Katona admits she flogged her beloved parrot so she could afford a pack of tampons during her cash strapped teens. Yeah, that's um, true. Next story, the first comment is from Isabella C. Dalkey in Ireland. It should be banned, end of. 
Me. <laughs> <laughs> Breeding more kids. We're going to need uh, another uh, one. That comment could be, be almost banned. anything. This comment's from Barrymore's Speedos, Nola in the United States. Pop legend and UK national treasure Kerry is the thinking man's favourite lady. Ooh, you've nice. got some real fans. fans there. Is it only fans? It should uh, be banned. It is something. Yeah, the story is: this is my body, and I will make money well, from it. Yeah. Kerry Katona slams OnlyFans proposed porn ban as she brands the move awful. Yeah. Well, this was a story a few years ago where OnlyFans said they were going to stop being essentially an adult content website. I have been bled dry. I have. I've had so much money, and I've been conned and lost it. And I'm like. I need to put my business head on here. Why am I? My Instagram's so PGE. It's, yeah. all, it's all about my kids. But like OnlyFans, it's a private adult over 18 yeah. site. I'll advertise, you know, OnlyFans is up there, 50% discount, whatever, you know, Easter sale, whatever. You know, <laughs> and praise the Lord, Jesus, he came back, you know, get on the OnlyFans. He came back, you can come and, now. Yeah. Did OnlyFans communicate with you as a creator when they looked to make this the switch? No. They didn't. So how did you... You just heard about it like everyone else. I just else. heard about it about everybody else. And it's just like, oh, shit, fuck, I'm making so much money from this. Please don't stop. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't, thankfully. Yeah, thankfully. We used to have FHM. Yeah, yeah. Zoo magazine. Nuts at magazine. And, you know... The internet killed them all. They were all the top shelf that, magazines. That's what we all used to do. You used to have all the young soap actresses and all doing the sexy pictures. And, mm. But we don't do that anymore because yeah. it's not there. And that's what OnlyFans is. Yeah. But I just go with that look a bit further. I make a lot of money out of it. That makes sense. Why not? I dare you. Next story. The first comment is from Nell91 in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. Who cares? If I don't have to sleep in your bed and you don't have to sleep in mine, what does it matter? Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Give me some else. Give me some else. Let's have another comment. This one's from Guy Burgess in West Mion. If you're single and socially active, wash the sheets whenever they're stained by joy juice. Ooh. Ooh. Joy juice. Okay, so I have a feeling this is about changing your bed. How often you should change your bed? Well, how often do yes. you change your bed? I'll have to ring my housekeeper and ask her. <laughs> 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 you think I'm fucking joking? <laughs> uh, once a week. Yeah, I, I once a week. Once a week. Uh, but the thing is, right, I'm really OCD. So I love coming home to fresh bedding and getting in my bed. It's the best thing so ever. So I say to Ryan, mm. Make sure the bed's clean. Now, we have two dogs. Yeah. Not my ex-husband's. <clears throat> I don't keep them around. <laughs> We've got a Rottweiler. Yeah. And a pink pug, right? Oh. And I have this very expensive bedding from the White Company. Mm-hmm. Very luxury, very nice. Now, Princess, who's our Rottweiler, who's a girl, right, is like our child. Okay. And I love her dearly. I do love her dearly, but my other half loves her. Even more. I think he might actually snog her more than he snogs me. Right. Oh, no, no. He doesn't tongue the dog. Oh, I tongue the dog as well. You tongue... You... Oh, we have a three-way tongue in. With the dog? With the dog. That... With Princess. I shit you fucking not. That is disgusting. If me and Ryan are kissing, Princess will jump up and she'll get involved. Nice. She can only get on the bed towards the end of the week when it's time to change the bedding. I see. So I think this is about how often you change your bedding. So for me, once a week. Pretty much. Comment number three. Is from South East London 16. Share towels. Think I want to be sick. That's very, very wrong. No, I share towels. <laughs> but to be fair, when I was in refuge, I did actually get scabies off a towel. Ooh. I was that's a, horrible. Yeah, I was only a kid. But you got to think about the environment as well. Can you imagine how many people live in my house? My washing machine is constantly on the go. <laughs> so imagine if I change my bedding like every two days and then I've got all the other kids' beds as yeah. well. Yeah, no, it must be tough. Well, the story is uh, it's a hassle. Kerry Katona joins the fierce laundry debates over how often you should wash bed sheets and towels. Yeah, quite right. right. On to the next story. This is from Mildred Roper in Melbourne. Just don't swallow. Lovely. Joy juice. <laughs> That'll be joy juice, won't it? Just don't, uh, just swallow. don't swallow. What's that about? I have no idea. I mean, it could be something more PG. All of our minds went to the same thing, though. It it's, pos- it's possible we're talking about, like, oysters or something. Swallow. Could be anything. Can we have another one, please, Jay? The next comment is from Mag Thatcher. In Unlikely. Bucks. Yeah, in Bucks. Yuck. And she's the sort of person who would do it and encourage her kids to. Her saying the opposite on TV is fooling no one. <laughs> Have you made any comment about blowjobs and, and the etiquette behind spitting or swallowing? Oh, my mum taught me how to give a blowjob with a banana. As part of, like, sex ed? No, my mum's was, my mom was completely fucked up. She's just crackers. Is it something to do with that? Mm-mm. I have no idea then. We're going to need another one. The next comment is from KW000 in Wakefield. 
I'm sure Kerry Katona has done a lot worse things than we in the sea. Swallowing, weighing in the sea and yuck. Oh, is this a debate about pissing in the sea? <laughs> yes. It says it's really dirty and disgusting. Kerry Katona launches into an impassioned rant about people peeing in the sea during Bizarre GMB segment. You do must you... be not Good Morning Britain talking about peeing in the sea. Yeah. So do you pee in the sea or not? I think I have done. But it says here that you are but very it opposed is... to it. Yeah, it's not nice, is it? You <laughs> it's know not that much worse than the millions of animals I that are doing it. I think it's okay. I got pissed on by a lion once. <laughs> a lion? True story. Not honestly. in the sea, you didn't. Not in the sea. But no, I think it's a okay I've pissed in the sea. But no, I don't. But what's wrong with pissing in the sea? Oh, it's just gross, isn't it? But all it? the fish are pissing in the sea. It's I'm, the same. I'm, look, I, you can be in your golden showers. I'm not into it, my <laughs> lovely. How did a lion end up urinating on you? So I was at Chester Zoo. Right. And <laughs> I really needed a wee. Yeah. I was, was only about three or four. And my mum couldn't be arsed or couldn't find the toilets. Uh-huh. And she just went, oh, to have a quick wee here. Pull my, my knickers down, which was near the lion's cage. And because I was peeing on, on his territory, oh. he came over, turned his butt to me and sprayed all over me. Amazing. That How is... many people can say they've been pissed on by a lion? And my Not... mum had to walk so far in front of me because she said the stench was so horrendous. <laughs> that, that I've never heard a story quite like that, So Carrie. I was pissed on by a lion. There's nothing that I have not done. Of all the reality shows you've done, what was your favourite? I think The Jungle because obviously I won it. And yeah. I, I've never... I, I think when you become famous, for me, I wanted to be, I craved love. I wanted yeah. to be loved. I, my self-worth was like non-existent. I just wanted so desperately to be loved. So when I won the jungle, that was amazing. And then I, I was running up in Big Brother. Yeah. I won't come down with me. I won slabs on the farm. You I win everything. Coach Very competitive. Trip. I'm not competitive. In a good I way. don't know how. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how. I mean, I watched the jungle back and I was like... Yeah. Which which reality show gave you the biggest fee to appear on it? Big Brother. Big Brother did. Yeah, the jungle was shit. I only got twenty five grand for that. And for Big Brother? Uh nearly four hundred. Wow. Yeah. That is that's a lot of that's money. That's good. Yeah, that's my what? phone. Is I'm it, so sorry. That's, that's the phone's phone. going. It'll be I'm a rage. So, I'm offering another half a million I'm for some tips. So, <laughs> so unprofessional of me. Do I should I really reveal those numbers in this crisis that yes. we're having? That, isn't that mad to think? The jungle. I only got twenty five thousand pounds. It's crazy. Yeah. But then you'd have earned a lot more because you won it. I, as in no. the, the, the opportunities off it. Well, the money that I got, I gave to charity. I gave I gave nearly a million to charity. Sure. Because back in the day when they did the jungle, yeah. your vote went... To the prize pot. To, yeah. No, went to a part of a charity oh. that the winner would choose a charity. Oh, that's quite nice. Yeah. You don't do that anymore oh, now, no, do no, they? Hey, ITV money. fucking caught on yeah. there, didn't they? you did become the face of Iceland after I that, which did. is obviously fantastic. That was great. Made me lots of money. Then yeah. I got my reality show. Then I did my books. Um, yeah, loads of coke, bankrupts, divorce. You name it, been there, done it. And that is Kerry Katona. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, Kerry, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being our guest today. Uh, has that made you more or less likely to want to read the comments? You know what? I was used to be so obsessed with it, but your opinion of me does not define me as a person, and normally it's very nasty shit. And But I welcome that because they've given me their time and energy to comment on my life, so thank you very much for that. She's laughing all the way to the bank. Thank you to all our listeners for lending us your ears. Please press the subscribe button and feel free to flood us with compliments and extravagant gifts. Either way, please remember to always go... Straight to the comments. Ciao. Now we all know they're flesh and bone, the same blood, sweat and tears. So why do famous people seem to really grind some gears? Idiot! Waste of space. What the hell are they wearing that? Who even are they? Stupid hair. They look a right dog. So whenever you feel lost and need a common sense, there's one place we all know to go straight to the comments.